My name is Allison and I'm a survivor of human trafficking. When I was 15 years old, I was your average angsty, hate your parents teenager. I didn't want to listen to mom and dad. Everything mom and dad said was either a conspiracy theory or wrong. That led into a lot of what got me into the trouble. They said no drugs. I said, well, of course, I'm going to go do drugs. The main person who got me into the human trafficking, he came into where I was working at the time, which was Subway. One of my coworkers was 21 and he had a tatted up friend. In my naive 15 year old brain, I thought he's 21, so his friend must be 21 because all my friends were my age. We exchanged Snapchats. He mentioned he had a studio in his house. He mentioned that we could drink and hang out in the studio. And within a week he had me snuck into his house. When the trafficking started, it still waited a couple months. It started at first showing up to work and being like, make me a sandwich, honking his horn nonstop. Controlling and I'm naive 15. He was threatening to have people beat me up. That's terrifying. I didn't want mom and dad to find out. And it slowly got progressively worse. It's turned into, you're going to meet up with this person, have sex. They're going to give you cocaine and money. You're going to bring it back to me. Like I convinced myself that, not that I was into it, but that it was a part of my lifestyle. It progressed very quickly. In my memory, I mean, the first day we hung out, he had got me blackout drunk and statutory assaulted me. I don't remember it. And every time we hung out, no, we won't do anything. And next thing I knew, I was undressed. So from day one, it was very forceful and controlling. But it was about two months into it where it started having the exchange with other individuals, which is what sex trafficking is defined as with the exchange of goods or services for a sexual um, service. And then it started turning into more money than drugs. And then it just started turning into, I wasn't even part of the money drug exchange, but I knew it had been happening. So I think they just slowly eased me into it so that I wouldn't be like, whoa, 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 what the heck do you mean go meet up with this person and you're getting paid for it? Because any average teenage girl probably would have questioned that. My parents, they slowly started to notice, eventually you can't hide your addiction. It's pretty easy to notice when your daughter's not sleeping for days. When they primarily had noticed is they would take my phone sometimes and they would read every single message. And they stopped one day and said, what do you mean you were raped? I spilled out just a little bit. I was just like, oh, I was raped by this guy. They within five minutes had found his address where he lived, asked me to lay out of his house, have the cops at our house. My parents cared, but I was very good at covering it up. And every time they'd catch me, I'd give them a little and hide a lot. They were like, you're going to rehab. And I was like, I don't want to go to rehab. You should know I don't have to go to rehab if I don't want to get sober. Didn't matter. They called me third week into rehab and said, we're moving to Arizona. Their mindset, it was getting me away from the people, places, and things I knew into a place I knew no one. So unfortunately, moving to Arizona in some ways was, yes, helpful. In other ways, it was not. It wasn't thought through my trafficker originally they didn't know the full extent of what he was doing to me and he's originally from Arizona that he had the second I moved out here moved out here with me he would contact me every once in a while and had people come groom me my parents did know at this point a week before I was 18 I had ran away I said you know what screw you I'm almost 18 you can't take my phone I'm done I hate you and it was off to the streets is a very young naive 17 almost 18 year old girl it was a new beginning for me of a lifestyle. There was no sobriety. Um, I left because I wanted to get high. Within a week, no longer wanted to get high. Um, the people who had convinced me to leave had been sent to groom me. The main tactics that they used were, you are my daughter's age. I would never harm my daughter. I would take care of you like my daughter. I didn't think in my mind there could be a bad father out there. And within 20 minutes of being with the first man that was supposed to be like, there's a caretaker basically, like a pimp is what it could be known as, but who's in charge of you, who you love, who you're attached to. And the first guy that was sent after me, like had me in his lap and he was like, do you care if we become more than just friends? And I was like, yeah, whatever. Cause in my head I was like, okay, but I'll still get drugs. Like I knew he wasn't gonna touch me cause I wasn't 18 yet. Cause Arizona is big on that, but wasn't smart about it. In Arizona, I was being trafficked from the week before I was 18 until like a couple months before I was 19. It's just in those couple months of being trafficked, they were the worst, they were the most brutal. And the day I escaped, I was going to be killed or sent to Mexico. There were multiple times I did try leaving and I, I was allowed to walk away. I had walked away many times. I'd walked for days on end. I had Stockholm Syndrome. I didn't really know what was going on. I just knew I was running from these people that wanted to enslave me. 
but I didn't really think that was happening because I was tripping, I was crazy, I was imagining it. Um, unfortunately, some law enforcement was in on it. So I had gotten to a point where nobody could help me. I was just shattered. I didn't know where to go, but back to my traffickers. I was just at such a point where I remember saying every day, I was like, I want to die or I want to find out that I'm in a mental hospital right now in a padded room in crazy. I was like, cause there is no way this stuff is not happening to me. Getting out of the trafficking and closing that chapter wasn't just a one and done ordeal. I got arrested that gave me three, three and a half, four months to get my brain off of drugs away from these people and with women going, girl, pay attention to what the hell is going on. Snap out of it. Do you realize what's going on? And it really just got me when I got out. My parents had picked me up and they knew it wasn't going to last. I was like, I'm going to stay sober. Like it lasted exactly a week. I thought I was going to go out for a drink with one of the men that I had met during the time period I was being trafficked who couldn't have been involved because he had a daughter my age. And he wouldn't let me go home that night. And I intended on just having a drink. And at this point, they were done trying to hide it from me. I had just gotten to a point they weren't drugging me anymore. I knew what was going on. They were getting really mad at me because I kept saying what was going on. And I was in a hotel room. I said, I'm a part of this. They snapped back and I was like, you wouldn't be reacting so negatively if you were innocent. And they started talking about, okay, we're gonna kill her, send her to Mexico, I'm sick of this. Back a couple of days, someone came into an Airbnb to install cameras, I don't know why still. He thought I was somebody's daughter until he looked around and realized what was going on. He slipped me his phone number and said, popcorn if you ever need anything. If it's an emergency text, popcorn. I was in the hotel and I went into the bathroom with my Wi-Fi phone. And I said, hey, thank you for that popcorn yesterday. It saved my life. Sent him the address, deleted the text, came out, they asked for the phone. A situation had occurred to where I could get out of the room and they said, leave with no tears, get out. But the streets were lined with two vehicles waiting to pick me up to bring to Mexico. And this is God, there was one civilian on the street. Nobody was out. It was 9, 10 a.m. in the morning. There was one man on the street and I went up to him and I was like, please let me use your phone. He didn't want me to touch his phone. And I was like, just please let me use your phone. And he was like, are you okay? And I was like, no, but please let me use your phone. I'm holding my composure. I could barely walk. I had the infection so badly. I had a UTI so badly. My kidneys were failing. And I called this guy and I was like, I'm no longer at that hotel. He's like, I just stopped there. Where are you? And he pulled onto the street and got me. I stayed with him and his wife for two days. For my dad's birthday, I went home and they convinced me to stay home despite my fears of my traffickers hurting them and coming to attack us. That was the last day of um, the ongoing trafficking. I have had assaults since then. And it's something uh, someone said at a trafficking walk that was at the safe house with me recently that we escape, but I don't think people realize that it's something we have to be aware of for the rest of our life. We're never fully, truly away from it. We're never truly 100% safe because there is always that chance that we say the wrong thing, that we don't watch the right door and our lives are gone. I never thought I'd make it out at all. And I never thought I'd be functional. I was working a job and one thing would be out of place. Like the dog would be in the wrong door at the wrong time of the wrong day. And I'd be like, my traffickers are here. Like I was in a psychosis for months and I never thought I would heal. It doesn't discriminate. It does not. It could be someone in your household. You have no idea. I was straight A student, cheerleader, working full-time job, normal girl in a pretty rich community. Educate yourself, because if you can just educate yourself on the signs, how to keep yourself safe and how to keep others safe, if you see a random stranger in public that looks like they're in danger, you can save one life. Signs to look for someone that's a victim of trafficking is they're coming into loss of something they like, like drugs, objects, money. They're infatuated with someone typically older, losing connection with friends and family, like disconnecting, isolating. In my case, I like stopped talking unless I was around certain people. I went from this outgoing, confident, loud girl to this never talking, shy, I'll just get whatever he's getting girl. I decided to share my story on social media. I've been trying to share it since I escaped, the day I escaped. And overnight I gained about 20,000 followers. You don't ask for that. You just wake up and I was like, oh, well, people are hearing my story, now what? Being able to get that platform is something I've dreamed of. I don't care about the money I never have. I just want to help people. Like that's my passion and that's where my heart's at now. And I just want more people to know by the time I'm not here. My name is Allison Hegel. I'm a survivor of human trafficking. Remember that you're priceless and there's no price on that human body of yours. It is 100% yours. Just remember that fact.